This is it. This is the B-29, the plane you've been waiting for. And it was worth waiting for. It's the biggest, fastest, mightiest heavy bomber in the world. It can travel farther and higher than anything else on wings. It has a pressurized cabin, permitting high altitude flight without oxygen masks. It has five remotely controlled, electrically driven turrets, each carrying twin 50s, with a 20 millimeter cannon added to the turret in the tail. Yes, the B-29 is everything you've been promised. And the pilot who flies one has an enviable job. Important, glamorous, and tough. <laughs> oh boy, what am I going to do with myself? So, I have a bit of show and tell for all of you, but before we go outside and take a look at what I picked up today, I'm going to tell you a bit of history, a bit of Kansas history. And if you're here, you may not, you may or may not already know this, but during World War II, Kansas was home to um, quite a few air bases, and there were, I think, probably five, five or so that were dedicated to the B-29, training men how to, how to fly and fight in the B-29 Super Fortress. And, um, in fact, I'm, we're kind of surrounded where I am by several of those air bases. And, um, and then Wichita, um, with Boeing, and they had an airport right next door. Um, that became an Air Force base during the war, and they were manufactured there. And uh, I think a liberal, um, consolidated liberator was out of Liberal, and Dodge City was the B-26, the Marauder, um, and many others. But anyway, so very close to where I live, um, I knew there was a practice bombing range during the war. And I went out one Saturday, got permission, and I walked all over um, several square miles of uh, property there, just sand hills and pasture for cattle grazing now. Took my four-wheeler and I went all over with my metal detector and never found a thing. And I was telling an older friend of mine that yesterday, in fact, and he said, well, I know of a guy that has passed away um, he was farming in his field, and they pulled up, or plowed up, an entire bomb. And through the years, they had collected pieces of shrapnel, you know, that they've plowed up, and they jumped out of the tractor and picked them up and threw them on the scrap pile behind the shed, because they didn't know what else to do with them. And this friend of mine had gotten permission to go, he wanted to go look at this bomb, which he did, and... Uh, he asked if he could pick through that scrap pile of shrapnel and pick some stuff out, and yeah, they didn't care. Well, the day he got there, he couldn't find a scrap pile. And the hired man had just loaded everything. They said they wanted him to clean up the, you know, the junk behind the shed. He took every bit of iron he could find behind the shed and took it to the scrapyard. And that's not what the farmer wanted, you know. He, he didn't even have iron then to uh, repair things with. But anyway, this same friend of mine asked if uh, what he was going to do with this whole bomb. And, well, he didn't know. And this friend of mine thought, well, perhaps it should be in a museum. So he contacted a museum um, that was home to one of these B-29 Air Force bases. Um, and, oh yeah, they sounded interested, but they never came and got it. And in the meantime, that landowner had died. And his brother was still living and farming in the same area. And he asked him eventually um, if he still had that bomb. And yeah, well, that museum in that town had changed uh, curators or whatever. And so this friend of mine contacted the new guy, and he was really excited about it. Yeah, I'll be there tomorrow to take a look at it. He never came. 
So this thing, now both of those elderly brothers, those farmers, have passed away. And this thing has been sitting out in the dirt for years. So I heard about that and I thought, you know, I'm just going to try to contact someone in the family. And I got a hold of a grandson of the first farmer. And he said, yeah, you can come look at it. It's still here. And I said, well, what are you going to do with it? And he said, I don't know. And I said, is that something you would want to sell or get rid of? And, oh, you can have it. So this morning, I went and picked up a huge bomb. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Um, it's, it's a bit smashed, as you can imagine, when it hit the ground. It flattened out a bit. And uh, <laughs> it's really neat. If I had a much bigger shed, I would put it inside and put it on display. I may keep it outside for a while and just enjoy looking at it. Let the kids sit on it. I don't know. Um, and maybe one day, if I do find a museum that actually is interested in having a bomb that was dropped by a B-29 during the war on Kansas for practice, if anyone out there still cares about that kind of thing, you know, I don't know. But anyway, let's go out and take a look at it. Okay, so here it is. And honestly, you know, I'd, I'd keep it, I'd hang on to it. Oh, hush. Um, I just have to figure out what I'm going to do with it. I like it, but the thing is, it's about six, six foot long, and you can see, you know, it should be round, but it's quite, quite flat. Um, I'll put up some pictures of the bombs, I think this would match. Um, the fin, if it had a fin when they dropped it, don't know if they bothered putting that on for practice, but uh, that's obviously gone. Could still be in the field somewhere. Um, hook points match the hook points that I see in the pictures. And then there's another tab down below and I'm not an expert on these things, guys. I I know a little bit about the airplanes back then. That's kind of been a hobby of mine my whole life. But um, as far as particulars about bombs, I just don't know. So there you go. Goodness, what does a guy do to it? With it? I suggested to my wife it'd make a dandy base for a coffee table. She laughed, but I don't think she took me seriously. But uh, anyway, I do have permission to go into the field where they pulled this out of. Um, so maybe that'll be a future metal detecting video looking for any other kind of ordnance. I don't know if if you would expect to find anything but shards of cast iron. But maybe there was some smaller stuff dropped too. And I think I need to skunk proof it if I keep it outside. Well there you go, go guys. Just kind of a fun thing I thought I should share. Have a good day. When you touch the ground, the plane should be slightly tail low and going between 95 and 100 miles per hour. Notice how the main wheels bear most of the shock of landing. Then the ship slowly settles forward. Don't apply brakes immediately. Let the plane lose some of its speed rolling. <laughs> 